Hey guys, welcome to Haley Animates. If you're new here, I'm Haley. I'm a freelancer who specializes in animation, illustration, and closet stress eating. But we're not actually here for that. Today, I thought it would be pretty cool to give you a little behind the scenes look at a drawing I did for Sketchy Sunday. For those of you who are not familiar, Sketchy Sunday is actually a new series that I'm starting. Every other Sunday, I'm planning to draw either a person or an object looking sketchy. It's supposed to be fun and silly and gives me a really nice break from my work drawings. So if you guys have any ideas or suggestions for future Sketchy Sundays, be sure to let me know in the comments below. With that out of the way, let's dive in. So I'm basically thinking about what makes a person look sketchy. First things that come to mind are trench coats, sunglasses, the expression, essentially all the elements that just make a person look suspicious. When I'm working on the drawing, I tend to go through a couple passes before I'm fully satisfied with it. Because I'm working on a cartoony style, I try to keep things loose just so there's a lot more room for error until I feel like I finally get a good sense of what I want the drawing to look like. Before recording this video, I actually browsed through Pinterest to find references on trench coats and sunglasses because I don't really own any of those things. Well, except for the sunglasses, but they don't really fit this drawing because um, they're, they're bright pink. <laughs> they're, they're really pink and not cool or shady at all, so I, I just, I needed pictures for that. So once I'm satisfied with the rough sketch, I turn down the opacity and start a new layer and sketch over that with a black pencil, uh, Kyle Webster's HB pencil specifically. I really like using that pencil because it looks really, really nice. It looks like a real pencil and I'm really comfortable with it. As I am working out the black pencil around the rough sketch, I'm actually still adjusting the drawing as I go. I use this as an opportunity to lock down the drawing before I go into line art. As I'm sketching over the blue drawing, I'm actually still adjusting the drawing as I go, uh, just to see what feels right, what feels like there's a flow. Essentially, I lock it down right before I go into line art. So once I'm satisfied with the drawing, I actually play around with the line art for a little bit using Kyle Webster's Clean as a Whistle brush. Right here, I'm actually trying to figure out how thick I want the line to go before I dive into the drawing. I really like using this brush because it's crisp and it's clean. It's not overly sharp, so it's perfect for my loosey cartoony style. <laughs> Uh, just to go off on a bit of a tangent here, I'm actually really happy that the latest Photoshop version finally added in a line smoothing tool to their program. As I mentioned before, I actually have super shaky hands, probably due to over caffeinating. Because of this, I mainly depend on the pen tool to help me create really clean lines. But one of my biggest frustrations about using the pen tool from Photoshop is that it doesn't really give you a whole lot of line variation. Essentially, what you get is what you get. It's just fixed. So my usual process would be I would just do the sketch in Photoshop and then export that, re-import it into Adobe Illustrator, do the line art through there, and then export that, then re-import it into Photoshop so that I can color it. But now that Photoshop has this line smoothing tool available, I can just do the line art directly into the program and completely not do that extra step. It really saves a lot of time and it gives me a lot of control about how I want the lines to look. So with the reflection lines on the sunglasses, those were actually drawn on a separate layer. This is because I knew that I wanted to create really sharp, clean lines, and I know myself well enough that they're gonna go past the sunglasses frame. So I wanted to make sure that I drew the reflection lines on a separate layer so I can cut them out past the frame, and then I can just merge the reflection lines with the main line art layer so that it just looks really clean. So once I zoomed out, I actually realized that the line weight for the character was just the same all around. So I decided to create a separate layer and bold the outline of the figure around it so we could get some more variation. 
I actually don't recommend doing this a whole lot because you're really running the risk of ruining the drawing. Especially if you're working traditionally, then the risk is even higher. But with digital, at least you can create a separate layer and just practice through that. And if you're satisfied with it, then you can just merge them. Also, I just, I really didn't want to redo the entire line art, so I just went ahead and did it. Yay, coloring! Okay, coloring is one of my favorite steps because at this point, I am so close to finishing the drawing and seeing the finished product. I also get a chance to experiment a whole lot. I'll have an idea of the drawing in my head, the pose and like the colors that I want, but sometimes I want to see what my other options are. What I'll do is that I'll figure out the lighting and the values beforehand, and then I'll create a separate layer and set that to overlay and just mess with the colors in the overlay layer. When I first thought about this drawing, originally I just wanted there to be a gray background, but then I thought, okay, what other moody colors could I play with? Like, what if I tried a purple or a blue, maybe even a red? Red can be warm, but you never know, like that could be moody. So then once I figure that out for the background, then I can just go ahead and shade the character. Since I figured out that I wanted the background to be purple, I decided to shade the character with a purple color. Set that to multiply and just lower the opacity and I painted it like that. Now I go back and clean it up a bit, add in some shine to her sunglasses using the dodge tool. Hmm. You know, I, I think she looks okay, but I don't know. She doesn't seem sketchy enough. Oh, I got it! Now that's a sketchy character. Hey guys, thank you so much for journeying behind the scenes with me. I had a lot of fun making it and I really hope that you enjoyed it too. I want this channel to be fun and engaging, so on top of my story time animations, I'm hoping to continue sharing my process and sharing all the tips and tricks on how I work and how I animate characters. So if you're interested in the gear and tools I use to create this video, or if you'd like to get your own so you can impress your friends with your own awesome art, check out the links in the description below. Speaking of story time videos, my first one will be coming out next week. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and karate chop that bell so you don't miss it. That's all for now. Stay tuned and see you soon.